Okay, here we are at Titan Machine Tool today, making some steel keyway discs. Made of steel, mild steel, nothing fancy. We're up to the milling. I'll show you how I got here so far. I cut these on the lathe, I do them on the lathe, make slugs, turn the OD, bore the ID, I do all that round work on the lathe. Then I bring them over here and I set them up on the mill to do this milling. So we got a keyway going through the middle. We got a keyway at a 45 offset. We have two little radii cutouts right there. And then there's gonna be a 249 and a half hole here and here. Similar to this one. This is a very similar piece. Making a bunch of these a little different variety. They have different OD, different ID, different radial cuts right here, different slot sizes, different locations. But the process to make them all is going to be the same. That's kind of what it looks like right there. So I make them on the lathe, like I said. I do the bore, do the OD, do the ID. Then I cut them off, put them on the south bend lathe, face off the backside, all the extra, leaving an extra five thousandths or so. And then I put them on the grinder and I grind both sides flat. Looks nice. Nice finish, nice and flat, no tool marks. So that's how, I, that's what I do, and then we mill them. But I'm gonna show you the program. We'll make some more chips later on. But I got this aluminum plate in the vise, and because I knew that these parts, the slots were in different locations, each part being a little different, I needed to set it up to have multiple clamp down spots to move these clamps, depending on where the slots were. I have the clamps here and here now, but depending where the slots are is gonna depend on where I need to put the clamps. So I drilled a series of tapped holes, eight of them around the piece. So regardless of where my slots come through, I'll always have some place to put those clamps down and clamp this thing in place. So anyways, here's the program for it right here. This is what we got going on. If you watch on the left, you'll see me cursoring up and down to the different steps. On the Accurite, this is an Accurite. They call them steps over here on the left for all of your programming. You can see the programming on the left as we go along. The uh, Prototrack calls them events. So it's similar. If you do a Prototrack, you call them events. If you do an Accurite, you call them steps. So with the graphics here, as you program it, you can see what you're doing and hopefully what you're doing is what you want it to do. So it's a nice little visual to check. When you program something wrong, like if you say minus instead of plus, it's pretty obvious you see it right away. So it's helpful. So these first four steps right here are basically just for visuals right here. Set tool, Who wants to know what kind of tool you're using. So I call out a diameter of a tool, a three inch diameter of the tool. I call that out because that's going to replicate the outside diameter of the piece. I'm not doing that here. I'm not doing any kind of milling operation. But for visuals, I can see the outside diameter of the pot. And all of the features I put in, I can see how they uh, relate to the outside of the pot and if it looks proper. Next one, same thing. Let's look at that. The tool, set tool, it wants to know what tool it is. And that's 1.501. That's the size of the, the hole through the bore. So if we look at it, it's a position drill. I'm really there again, not doing anything. I just call out the position zero, zero so that it puts that 1.500 hole in the middle so I can see it when I'm programming. Now down here, first real operation we're gonna do, we're cutting all this with a four flute solid carbide end mill. This first one right here, I don't know if you can see it, we'll get really close. See the blue? There again, like I said, when you're on it, it highlights blue. So instead of plunging the end mill straight into there, because there's a lot of solid material there still, I plunge the end mill off of it and walk into it this way, to the center, a little, a little past the center line. And I do that three times, different Z depths, until I get to the final depth. The pot's 625 deep, thick I should say. So when I get to 635 deep, I know that's all roughed out. Then I can plunge the tool straight in on center and do a circle pocket. Rough all that material out, finish pass, and then that's done. 
So now I got to do the exact same thing over here. But instead of reprogramming all of that, I'm doing math for the 45 degree angle from where that one is to where the next one is because it doesn't call it out on the drawing. I can use this feature over here. Rotate. And what rotate lets me do is, is take a series of steps and rotate them off of a center line. So I'll show you what we got going on there. Rotate. So it wants to know what steps I want to rotate. And you can see I'm rotating steps six through eight on the center line, which happens to be this zero, zero, the center of the part. Let's know how many degrees you're gonna rotate it, 45 degrees. And the positive or negative, it will reflect that. So when you see it now, when I show it back to you again, it's gonna be at the positive 45, but if I put it at minus, it would be at minus 45. And how many times you wanna do that? You wanna do that one time, two times, five times, however many times, one time. So what do we got on the rotate? It took those three little lines and rotated them 45 degrees so I can cut them again over here. And there's my circle pocket, size is that one. And what do I do? I do the same thing, rotate. So I rotate what event? I, I keep calling them events, but there's steps here, okay? Step 10, first one, last one, step 10. Rotates off the center line of XY00. 45 degrees, one time, and what do we got? We got the circle pocket right there using the rotate feature. So I'm gonna use that same rotate feature to cut these slots. Instead of doing the math to calculate the slot on that 45 degree angle and the starting points and ending points and all of that, it's easy to do this way because it's straight up and down. My slot is 442 wide this way so I know if I'm on the center line this way, that means it's 221 in the minus, 221 in the positive. So it's easy to program. So essentially I just come down the middle twice right here. No cut a comp using the 3 8 end mill just to rough that all out. So that gives me a 3 8 wide slot down the middle. I take it in two passes, it's 200 thousandths deep is what it finishes at. So I go like 95 thousandths, 95 thousandths and then the finish 5,000s at the Z minus 200 on the actual finish passes. So like I said, I go up and down the middle, no cut of compensation, just programming on the center line of it using the tool diameter to finish the width of it. Then when I come down here, see there's the pass. I got a little rapid move in the middle because uh, we're cutting air, so we just want to expedite things through the middle. So those are the two down the center rough passes. I use the rotate feature, now it takes them from this way and doop, rotates it that way, does the exact same thing. So after that's roughed out, I come to my finish pass. You can see I'm up here on the blue, so now I use the cutter comp. It's gonna wanna know what size tool it is, G41, G42 type thing, cutter right, cutter left. So then I program to my actual numbers that I'm gonna finish at. Like I said, it's 442 wide, so that's 221 on each side. So I'll take the first pass at maybe 210, Rough it out, minus 210, cut through, come across, plus 210, come up, and then do it again at the 221. Spring pass, finish pass, slot finishes at 442. Then I take all of that, you can see as I'm going down, see the blue? As I cursor down through the program, you can see those lines moving for each event, each step. Ding, 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 ding. And then when we get down on the last one, boom, we hit the rotate. And you can see it highlights it because it's doing it the same thing over here now. All of those steps. What did we do? Let's look at, let's look at that information on that rotate line. We're going from step 19 to step 41 on the XY center location of the arc, which happens to be X, Y, zero, zero, center of the pot. How many degrees? Minus 45 degrees. I could have used either one, plus or minus. If I, did, if I went to plus, watch, I'll change it to plus. We'll go plus and you see what it looks like. We'll change it to plus. Use. Oh, now look, see it's going the other way. So now the slot rotation is going there instead. So that, that's a pretty powerful feature, saves you a lot of baloney. 
go back to what it's supposed to be, minus 45, and now it puts it right back where it's supposed to be. So, minus 45, plus 45, from where it is at. So it's at the 90 degree, 12 o'clock, six o'clock location, up and down. Minus 40 degrees, tips it this way. Plus 45 degrees, tips it that way. So that's essentially all the milling that's gonna happen there. And then I come back and I just clean up these pockets again. I really don't need to clean that one up, but this one I do because I cut them slots through so it pushes some burrs in there. I just go back in there, clean that up again. And then after I use the circle frame features, I go in and do a circle frame with a 45 chamfer tool just so I can chamfer this edge, chamfer that edge. I could do the inside. I will use it on the inside when I flip the pot over because this side right here I did on the lathe, so it already has a little chamfer on that inside bore right there, so I don't have to do that. But then I do the sides of the slots, chamfer all of that. I just copy and paste the program over again and rerun just the finished passes and none of the roughing passes to put the chamfers on. This one has not been chamfered yet, but that's what I'll do next. I had to size the slot. I take my gauge blocks, I put them in the slot. Let me show you. I'll check it. It's the, uh, the, the slots call for a, a dimension. This one is 442, plus nothing, minus five. So I got my gauge blocks. I got a stack of gauge blocks here. I stack them up and check them, you know, to make sure that's, that's 443. You know, 442 is the low, so I program it that, and then I just, open them up a little bit, make sure the 443 goes in nice. So if we got 445 plus nothing minus five, and these 443, the stack up of gauge blocks goes through there nice, I think we're in good shape. So that's how I check them. But anyways, that's the programming for this part, this type of part right here, using a rotate Program the line, program the pocket, rotate. It does it for me over here. Rough, finish, repeat all of those steps with the rotate, and then it does it over here for me at the 45 instead. So that's what we got going on there, a little bit of programming action. Uh, when we come back in another video, we'll be making chips once again. Titan Machine Tool signing off for today. Azita Zane, adios.